Yeah, I, I love. I, I honestly love the, the five rounds. You know, I love having the the peace of mind that if, if if I mess up the first couple of rounds, I still have three to go. You know, I, I love the, having that in the back of the of the the back in the back of the pocket. You know, like I, I like being able to pull that out. Like I I do well in the third and fourth, in the fourth and fifth round. So I like having that that as a backup for sure. First of all, introducing our challenger. Coming out of the uh, blue uh, corner. He's going to step in and he does. It's all over. Let's bring on the boo. This is Eternal MMA. All right, everybody, welcome back and thank you for joining us here once again on another edition of Eternal Insiders. We are being joined today by the man set to defend his Bantamweight title at Eternal 85 on June 8th at the HBF Stadium in Perth, Western Australia. One of Perth's favorite sons and your Eternal MMA Bantamweight champion, Rod Costa. Rod, it uh, seems like it's about the millionth time I've had you here on the show, man, but hey, it's always a pleasure. How, uh, how are things going with you, man? What, we're less than, less than a week out now uh, from this upcoming fight. I'm very excited. How is everything trending with you in the lead up to this one? Yeah, um, always good to, to talk to you, Luke. Thanks for, for having us again. And um, yeah, everything's good. It's just same as always, you know, just um, last few days of preparation. Just about losing the weight now and, and keeping keeping a good attitude, good vibe. And yeah, everything's well. I mean, you say uh, same as always, but uh, we found this out in hindsight. The, the build up to your last fight, uh, you dealt with a little bit more adversity than normal. Uh, turns out you were dealing with an ear infection last time that affected... Uh, a bit of the weight cut. Uh, can we safely say no more ear infections this time around? We're just battling the weight cut in normal fashion. Yeah, just just battling the weight cut. Yeah, the the ear is good. Okay, that, that's <laughs> good to hear, man. Yeah, I, I look. I, I know it's not always just a hundred percent clean bill of health, but uh, that was a hell of a thing for you to deal with last time, man. Like we we talked a bit about that uh, after your yeah. your last fight. That affected everything from you being able to train, from being from being able to weight cut. Uh, that yeah. was uh, that was quite a tumultuous time for you. That sucked. <laughs> that sucked. Uh, I think I, I get. I feel, I feel like every fighter deals with something. You know, it's very rare that you go into a fight not dealing with anything. But something like that is like kind of like that extreme where it's bad, but you can still fight. You know. But I was lucky that it ended just at the right time for me to lose the weight and everything. You know? <laughs> no, it still worked out well, man. And you you came out yeah. with a big time victory. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll talk about, uh, of course, the upcoming fight. But uh, what else has been happening in the meantime, man? I think I saw recently uh, you got to go back uh, home to Brazil. I think you attended a wedding. I think I saw you got a bit of training in over there and everything too. Uh, what yeah. was that time like for you to, to get back over there and uh, enjoy being back in Brazil? Yeah, it was great. I, I hadn't been I hadn't been to Brazil since uh, I moved back here in, in uh, late night. 2019 so uh, it's been like about four years it was good to see family again I, I spent a lot of time with um not a lot of time I wish I could spend more but I spent some time with with uh, the wife's family as well in Sao Paulo then I went over to my family my cousin got married it, it was um and he said like I trained a little bit I did I did train a little bit I, I trained about four times in three weeks which is the least I have trained I think my whole life unless I've been injured you know so uh, it's a bit of a change. Like normally, even on holidays, I'm I'm training every day. But um, kind of sort of wish I'd, I I trained a bit more. But but also it was good to to have the time off. To, to be honest, you know. But yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, as far as like getting back over and training, like was that you able to like catch up and train with people you've trained with in the past, like old friends and that sort of thing, like old coaches or anything yeah. like that? Like what uh what, what was sort of um like who were you sort of hooking up with over and there in that regard? Yeah, that's that's all I did. I, my plan, uh, I've I've been telling some of, some of my my mates, but my plan was, so half of the the things I took to Brazil for three weeks was training stuff, right? I took my shin pads, took MMA gloves, took everything, and I didn't use any of it. You know, <laughs> I literally I literally did four sessions, two in the gi, two in no gi, I believe, and uh and just training with like my old coach. I, I went to his gym a couple of times. Uh, and I went to to one of my mates that um, used to train with us at at, uh, at my old gym, but opened his own gym now. I went uh, and trained with him a couple of times, Lucas. Um, so um, it was more like re recreational training, if that makes sense. You know, just training with friends and having a good time. My my cousin that lives here with me um, was there as well because his brother was getting married. So and he trains uh, at my gym. So like did some training with him and my other cousin in Brazil. 
who's a blue belt also trains. So so it's just like some family time, you know, t- training a little bit with the, with the with the boys. No, I can only imagine, man. I mean, it's only like you said, what back in 2019 was the last time you got to go uh, back over and see everyone. So you you wouldn't want to be like just training balls to the wall all the time. You want to get over there, let your hair down a little bit, experience some good times. So I can certainly appreciate that, man. So don't give yourself too much of a hard time for not breaking out the shin pads and everything. Uh, you've more than sort of earned the rest and a bit more of the recreational time. But I mean, as far as you keeping busy in general, I was like back in March. I mean, you of course made your way over with the team uh, to Miami. Uh, to help Jack in his preparations. Jack Della Maddalena, of course, your training partner uh, for his yeah. big-time win uh, against Gilbert Burns at uh, UFC 299. Obviously, that was a great win for Jack and a great experience for him, but what was that like for yourself and the team going over there, uh, experiencing everything over there in Miami, Florida, USA? Uh, what was that trip like and just as a, a bonding experience for you guys? Man, I, I love I love going over and, and doing a uh, and doing a bit of uh the the last couple of weeks of camp with Bello and his fights. You know, it's such a good time. Like the 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 last few weeks, you know, there's a little bit of training, but there's a lot of just 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 hanging around. You know, like um, uh, waiting for the time to come for, for for him to step in the cage. You know, but but um, it's very fun. I love it, and 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 just being in in another culture as well. Like I I've never been to Miami. You know, uh, and then together with that, uh, he was fighting Gilbert Burns, who, who who I've been a fan of since, like before I met uh, Jack. You know, uh, obviously coming from Jiu-Jitsu, Gilbert Burns. If you do him a main, you come from Jiu-Jitsu. Gilbert Burns is something, someone that you, you know, probably probably the the one of the highest level of Jiu-Jitsu that that got to the highest level of MMA. You know, so um, it was it's an unbelievable experience. It was, it was awesome to be there with the team, and I. You know, I, I plan on, on making as as many of these trips as as I can. No, I think I, I think I recall uh, seeing uh, maybe a video from your coach Ben Vickers, uh, of course, co-promoter for Eternal MMA, and I think he said something about it was just one of the best trips uh, for yeah. himself and for the team uh, of his life. Like everything was just smooth. He just went over there. It was just such a relaxed vibe, like coming yeah. in and everything, uh, which was very cool to hear. And uh, Miami is certainly a good time for sure. So, yeah, you, you, Miami's great, isn't it? I've heard, like, Miami – I mean, yeah. I might hear this from Dana White, but apparently Miami's, like, just, like, boomed in the last sort of few years. I was there in 2013 yeah. a long time ago, but apparently it's yeah. just – it's off the charts now for a good time. It's great, man. It kind of reminds me of Brazil a little bit because uh, the weather is, is very similar. Like, it's a hot weather, you know. Um, and also, it's, it, it, it's I've been to um, America a lot. And when you're in Miami, it feels like you're somewhere else. It doesn't yeah. feel like America, to be honest. It feels like you're in Cuba, and some people speak English. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's very cool. But uh, yeah, it, it's a completely different vibe than than uh, LA, which is where I spend most of my time. If I go to, if I go to um to America, and, and I've been a little bit in New York, and, and that is it's completely different. Seems, honestly, it seems like a different country, but it's awesome. Very different cultures over there all around, man. I mean, you just referenced Gilbert Burns there, of course, uh, to fellow Brazilian, uh, of course, you know, anyone that grows up admiring you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and everything like Gilbert Burns, definitely one of the big names there to follow. Uh, you're, you're around the uh, the Money the money podcast, the Show Me the Money podcast with him and Anato Mocano. Like, that's blowing up yeah. at the moment. I don't know if you're a yeah. podcast man, but I, I'm loving yeah. that show right now, man. That is yeah. that is so cool. Yeah, a lot of guys at my gym love the the, the Money Moicano podcast. So he's such he's a personality, kind of, Moicano, man. Yeah. Like, he's just, yeah. like, come out of nowhere with this. It's so freaking yeah. good. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> for sure. Now, I mean, for yourself, man, obviously uh, coming into this one, um, actually, I, I did want to ask you too about, uh, we just mentioned Jack before we talk about uh, your fights coming up. Jack, uh, of course, uh, just announced that, you know, he's still dealing with the ongoing injury that he had from that fight over in UFC 299, just some complications with the arm and the recovery side of things there. Uh, yeah, how is things going for Jack? I know Jack's a very you know, level-headed guy and keeps things in perspective. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of ruled him out, I guess, of that um, upcoming Perth card for UFC 305, yeah. which is disappointing for himself and the team, I'm sure. H- how's he doing mentally, and uh, and how's the team sort of getting around him in this time? Um, I think Jack is a, is a pretty private dude, you know. Um, so, like, obviously, we, he's around all the time, and um, I'm sure he's being hard, but he doesn't show it, you know. it's um, I, I feel like... A, like a fighter to the level that he is, you got to deal well with whatever comes, you know, like in a in fight week and whatever. And and this is just something much of the same, you know, it's just like a, you know, it's like a, like a little thing, a little bother in, in on the way. 
and you just got to deal with that well. There's there's no point of being negative or anything. I'm sure, like, you know, we're upset that he, he's not fighting 305. I'm sure he's the most upset out of everyone. You know, he's been calling for that. Um, Rockman not fight for a while, and, and he'll imagine how cool that will be in Perth, you know? So I'm, I'm sure he's upset about that, but he's just, you know, high spirits. He's always in a good vibe when he's around. He's, he's been coaching a little bit more, helping out in the gym. It's invaluable to have him around when he's not training, you know, selfishly, if he's not training, he's he's, uh, he's helping a lot. You know, like little things he says is someone that has so much knowledge um, helps with with the input that everyone else has. You know, so it's been good. I I, I feel he's just taking his time, and as soon as he as he can be back, he'll, he'll be back. I feel so. No, for sure. Not, not that big a deal, or, you know, if you put things into perspective, he's gonna do that well. Oh, of course you will, man. I mean, you know, we know the gym of Scrappy MMA, like how well you guys get around each other and the toughness and the mentality and everything. Very close-knit unit, keep everything in perspective. So no doubt we'll see him come back uh, bigger and better than ever, hopefully sooner rather than later for sure. So all the best to JDM and his yeah. recovery. Uh, but to you, man, of course, we come into this fight hot off the heels of uh, your first title defense against Alan Philpott uh, at Eternal 82, uh, that of which was uh, an incredibly entertaining build-up uh, to that fight from both perspectives. Of course, we've had you on the show to talk about that and everything, but uh, has the smoke, like, has it officially settled as far as everything goes between you two guys? Like, you see, like, the odd jab here and there on social media back and forth. I don't think there's any danger you guys catching up for a beer anytime soon, but uh, has a lot of that sort of smoke died down a bit between you guys? Um, yeah, uh, from my part, yeah. I, I don't wish him bad. Um, we will we'll never be friends, uh, not ever. Um, but uh, I don't, I wish him, I wish him well, you know, um, yeah, it's, there's not much I can say. He, he said all, all his stuff and, and if he knocked me out, he would have, he would have wrote, you know, he would have kept, kept along with the, all the bullshit he was saying. I felt like I'll stay true to myself. I said, I felt like I, I said what I believe and, uh, you know, I risked it because it could have gone his way, but. Everything that I said, I, I feel like I, I believed in, and I wasn't, I had my fun, you know, I had my fun, with, uh, you know, especially after the win, but uh, everything I said, I, I, I feel I believe. So I, I wish him well in, in terms of like him there, I'm here, you know, separate, <laughs> but um, in on a human level, I, I wish him all the best. I don't know what he's going to do with his life, but yeah, it's not, it's not a thought, you know, every once in a while, I, it's not like I'm thinking about it. Every once in a while, you know, like I, I, post something funny or something because yeah. it reminds me, you know, people, people seem to enjoy, you know? Um, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, it's uh, the only reason I bring it up. It's just um, like from a, from a neutral perspective, cause I've spoken to both you guys, right. And, and I find you guys to be just two polar opposites in terms of your personalities. And I guess when you're not directly involved, I guess, in that sort of situation and uh, you can see the qualities of both you guys in terms of what you bring to a fight uh, both from a personality perspective, from a fight perspective, uh, it, it is very cool. So, you know, I wish both you guys the best, but that, that was an incredibly entertaining build up. Great fight for yourself, of course, because you came away with that, with that win from, with the, uh, the arm triangle from the bottom, which was an incredible yeah. finish, of course, but, uh, it's led us to this one, man, which is the upcoming fight, uh, yeah. at Eternal 85. Uh, now your opponent, uh, coming in for this one, uh, out of Japan, top 15 ranked, uh, Bantamweight in Japan by the looks 15 and eight and one with his record. So, uh, a very experienced practic uh, practitioner for uh, mixed martial arts. What do you know about him, if anything, in terms of what he brings to the table and his challenges, man? Obviously, it's an international opponent. Uh, yeah. Probably don't see a lot of him, obviously, anything locally, but what do you know? Uh, it was tough in the beginning to, to try and find uh, anything about him. I'm already not a person that, that wants to see too much of my opponent, you know? Uh, if I, like, when I forget, when I get fuel port, for example... I got Ethan or whatever, Any anyone locally, because you know who they fought, so you kind of have an idea, you know how many fights they've had. You might go around and watch a fight or two, but at, that's that's about the most I like to do, you know, in terms of, like, concentrating on my opponent. So it's hard to find in the beginning, but then then a couple of the guys found a couple of his fights because it's, uh, because it's Japanese. I think he's in Japanese characters. It was hard to find, you know. But I, I, I found, like, three or four fights that, that he's done um, – and, and I, I looked at that once or twice, you know, and, and that's about it. And then just just to, just to have a vision, an overall vision of of of, of him and, and and stuff. And that's it. I just know he, he I know he's shorter than me. I know he's he's like he comes in with a lot of power, right? He, he doesn't set up a lot of things, but he's a good strike and he doesn't overextend himself. He doesn't put himself in bad spot that much that that I saw. Um, 
and that's about it. That's that's all I'm coming with, you know. E everything else is is just me trying to implement my 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 sort of stuff, you know. I think we're seeing a lot of opponents too, uh, especially recently, come over internationally from those parts, right? Like you know, Japan, Korea, and all that sort of thing, uh, to give you guys like the champions. Uh, opponents to fight uh, which is a very cool thing because you know we're we're building a lot of bridges to these regions and, and creating connections but you know obviously most importantly uh, we're giving you guys uh, or Eternals uh, providing you guys with challenges so you can defend your title and everything I mean for yourself for this one for for this particular fight like to your knowledge was this fight being put together with another international opponent coming over was this sort of a, a lack of like a logical opponent locally for you to be able to face or was just sort of, was this the best challenge that uh, we could sort of put together? Uh, the one that just sort of made the most sense in general. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I try to stay away from those conversations. Obviously uh, I'm somewhat involved, you know, that um, I know Ben really well and, um, but we really don't have those talks. Oh, what do you, you know, like, it's kind of like Ben, every once in a while he might, give me a little bit of a clue of what it, what they're looking at, you know? So I think it's a combination of both, of being hard to find a Benamway person here and then also uh, wanting to get me an international experience, uh, international fighter, you know? Like, I, I feel like I've let, I've made it known that, that I do want to get some international experience, uh, whether it be a, a, a different fighter or internationally or, or me going over, you know, which, which this can lead to as well. You know, if I win this, maybe... I can go to Japan and, and do a fight or two there um, eventually. And uh, I think it's a combination of both, you know. I, there's, a, there's, there's good Bantam ways in, in Australia, but like I've been saying in a couple of other podcasts and, and interviews, it seems like we all kind of uh, grouped into, into our own little, into our, not little, into our own promotion. You know, I, I'm here. Cody uh, was the champion of Hex. Um, and then we got Aaron and there's some, there's some other Bantamweights, but it seems to be hard to get the top level guys to, to face each other, you know? Um, um, so, so, so yeah, I, th I feel it's just the best they could do. Yeah. No, I mean, like we got to also put it in perspective, right? I mean, like he's coming out with so much experience, you know, this is not any yeah. sort of slouch. Like, you know, he's, as we said, the top 15 ranked uh, yeah. guy over in Japan and they, they got a lot of dudes over there in those sort of weight classes, yeah. man. So this one one thing challenge. that I'm happy about is that, uh, and, and I've, I've figured this out uh, real soon before moving to Scrappy. I mean, after moving to Scrappy, that Ben doesn't, Ben, ben is one of the things I admire about him, he doesn't give uh, his fighters just like bums that, that they can beat to build the records. I, I've never seen him do that. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's been moments where I thought maybe the person wasn't even ready or, or whatever, right? Like maybe sometimes I think it goes the other way. Um, and, and that doesn't change for me. And, and Becca has also got someone from Japan. I feel like we, we're getting, we're getting good experience opponents that, that they have a shot and they, they, they can, they have the, ch the same chance of winning as we do. It's not, it's not, you know, like someone brought over to lose, which is from my perspective and, and from the old days, that's, that's what I'm accustomed to, right? Like people that get brought over from other, uh, from international countries, they, um, a lot of the times, people with bad records and getting brought over to lose, if you will. So I don't feel that's what it is. I feel like it's a hard challenge. It makes me nervous, right? Um, and that's what I'm looking for, the, the these next few fights, you know? I mean, you just mentioned uh, Jack Becker, one of your teammates at Scrappy MMA. But, I mean, of course, every time uh, there's a Perth card, there's always quite the contingent of Scrappy MMA guys that compete together on those cards, which is... Very cool thing to see. Of course, we've got Jack Becker in his fight. Uh, Khan Diata, White Fraser. I know Wes Kappa, uh, at least in part, you know, stops by Scrappy MMA to sort of get his reps in there too. So uh, a lot of the guys from that team rolling in again. Of course, your uh, coach, Ben Vickers, as we mentioned, who co-promotes uh, Eternal MMA and runs things over there in Perth. What's the team vibe like in general in the lead up for this one? Uh, it must be a cool thing to be able to roll in with sort of so many guys as, as a unit. Yeah, it's, it's great. I was just talking to Becca today about this, and we're just like after training, we're just sat, sitting around talking a little bit, and and um, you know, just we both just said like how cool this card would be, you know, like me, him, and uh, Wes are pretty close, you know, uh, we got a pretty good um relationship going on, and and um, we're fighting very close to each other, you know. I think it's me, Drillich before me. Then of Wes, course, I forgot to mention Anthony Drillich yeah, there. Yeah, I spoke to yeah, Anthony last yeah, night as well. So, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, in the co-main event slot, Anthony Drillich, yeah, yes. So, 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 like, I think from the main card, there's one person that's not from our gym. 
And I know the person as well, Wongi, I think. I think he's, a, he's the only guy in the main card that's not from Scrappy or, or one, of, one of the parts, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very cramped up, like the, the last few fights. And, and then there's the, the amateurs going in as well, uh, which is good. And, and we're all close, you know? I'm, I'm saying like me, Jack, and Wes, because I've known those guys for, for longer. But, you know, like Khan, we, we, we always train. Khan's with us every day, you know? I, I used to do a little bit more with Khan. I haven't done much with him recently since going to Benway and stuff. But... He's Khan's a scary dude, and I'm looking forward to, to his fight. Um, uh, he's doing awesome, and and everyone, everyone from Scrappy, Drillich, you know, Drillich, uh, has proved himself to be to be a very, very top of the division, he's just manhandling people really well. So uh, it'll be a good good night. I think that there's a there's a good chance we all do really well, and regardless, we, we're all just going to battle. Um, you know, um, it's a, it's a good good feeling for sure, especially preparation wise. I feel on the days it might might be a little bit chaos you know because it's like oh one person the next the next and you got to start scrambling uh what coaches go where and stuff so so in terms of that we need to prepare a little bit to be like oh, i'm warming up with this person i'm doing that you know like so, so there's always a structure around it but i, I always feel sorry for ben in these situations because yeah, i know yeah, like his anxiety never goes lot, to the yeah. roof yeah like what, what's he uh what's he sort of like yeah. on kind of fight week man because he's trying to like part run the show and get his guys yeah. ready and everything i can't even imagine that spot man yeah, so it's it's a bit of a mess, but but it's you know well, it's commendable I, I feel, though. Like it's it, crazy it, that you can yeah. put all that together. Like it's, it's yeah for wild. sure. Yeah, and uh, I th I feel like his mood changes a lot <laughs> depending on like if you're winning or losing. You know, which is it's uncontrollable if you're gonna win or lose. But <laughs> yeah, but uh, you just gotta brush it off yeah. and move on to the next. Like doesn't matter. Yeah, like yeah. as the show yeah, goes there's, on, there's when not too goes much on. time to to um sit and and soak. You know, so. Of course. Yeah. No, hats yeah. off to the coach, Ben Vickers, for, uh, you know, for, for running everything from two different angles there, man. It's, uh, it is, it's an yeah. incredible thing to watch because you see it on camera too, him, him, uh, managing absolutely everything. It's so wild. Uh, team full of finishes coming into this one from your team. Of course, Anthony Drillich, of course, uh, where's Kappa yourself as well. I mean, speaking of finishes, man, I mean, your opponent, if we look at one last thing with your opponent, six out of his eight losses have all come by the way of finish, right? Uh, yourself, you're a big time finish, man. Cause I think seven out of your eight wins have all come by way of finish. And, and now I know I've spoken to you plenty of times often enough to know that you're not a predictions guy, but I mean, come on. I mean, you get the win yeah. this, uh, this time around defend the belt. I mean, with everything and all that information right there, we're guaranteed a rod cost of finish. What do you reckon, man? I mean, you stack everything up. It, it's on the cards for this one. Yeah. I, it's, it's, um, yeah, I'm I'm con I'm confident. It's five rounds, you know. Whenever it's five rounds, I feel like I, I can push more than than most people. Um, and to be honest, if I can't, then then props to to um to whoever whoever's tougher than me, you know. <laughs> but uh, I feel like I can push real hard, and and it's five rounds, and uh, you know, I um I, I feel like if I keep myself safe the first couple of rounds and, and still do work. I think sets me out to, to, to a good finish late, late in the rounds, which is what, I, what I'm looking for, you know? I can kind of come here and, and, and say that, you know, I would love to finish every round the first round, every fight in the first round, but I, just, I feel that's just not, um, I'm not I'm not too explosive in the beginning, I'm, you know, like, so I feel like that, that doesn't, it's, it's not like the type of fight I am to come out and just give hell first round and try to get people out of there. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel, uh, I feel there's a good chance. I, um, Either me or him get 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 it done the last couple of rounds, you know. Obviously, I'm confident on myself doing it, but and I feel I can survive mostly anything unless I get knocked out, you know. But um, yeah, I, I love I, I honestly love the the five rounds, you know. I love having the the peace of mind that if if I mess up the first couple of rounds, I still have three to go, you know. I love the, having that in the back of the of the the back in the back of the pocket, you know. Like I, I like being able to pull that out, like I. I do well in the third and fourth, in the fourth and fifth round. So I like having that, that as a backup for sure. No, we've seen you pull it out uh, numerous times, uh, of course, man. Like just, you know, pulling out those submission wins, like after things have gone awry from the first couple of rounds. So uh, right on the money there, brother. And uh, one more before I let you go. I know this question gets asked of you a lot, uh, but it's always worth checking in as far as, you know, what updated goals are and everything's sort of relevant in terms of how, you know, you kind of view your future. And you kind of touched on it a little bit before, in terms of maybe looking for some challenges in Japan or that sort of thing, of course, Japanese opponent now, but maybe looking to yeah. potentially fight internationally in Japan. What are you sort of hoping, I guess, comes next after this one for you? Everything goes well and, and you keep the title. Is there anything still here that kind of excites you as another challenge or are you hoping it's something internationally that comes for you next? 
I just, uh, like, like I've been touching before, I just want the biggest opportunities uh, the next few times around. You know, I, I know it might not always be possible to, to one up every time, but I feel this is a one up because he's an international guy. He's, he's, a, he's got a, a good, uh, good enough record and, and he's um, got a lot of good qualities. He was a champion in, in, in Japan before and it is in, in the top 15 and, and everything. So I think that's a one up. And, so, so I'm not looking too too much uh, past just that that small thing, which is I just want to have uh, bigger and better opportunities. Uh, and I feel like after this one, if everything goes well and I'm not hurt, I, I would want to do the the Perth card. You know, like I I do miss fighting uh, over even even over East. You know, I, I love fighting over. I, I like I like either. Right. I think we talked about it. There's pressure fighting at home and pressure fighting fighting away. I kind of miss fighting away a little bit. I've been I've been put on the Perth cards the last the last few, uh, but I want like but I want to do the August one if I'm good you know if I'm healthy I want to do the it's in front of the UFC, uh there will be a lot of eyes in there, uh hopefully a big fight you know like we can get a bit a, a bigger name to fight me uh in front of um in front of in front of the UFC crowd. Not the UFC crowd, but the day before the UFC, you know, it was a little bit of a different show. Uh, I haven't fought in a show like that before. But the last time I was supposed to fight, and then I got hurt, and then Ersek fought, and and the atmosphere was good, you know. So um, that's that's the plan. If everything goes well, hopefully I'll fight on that Perth card. But we'll take it as as it comes, I guess. No, I mean, you certainly can't have a Perth card without Rod Costa being there, man. So uh, it's one thing for you to be able to enjoy getting away and uh, fighting some away matches and that sort of thing. But like I said, we can't have a Perth card with one of Perth's favorite sons in Rod Costa. Uh, topping the bill there because you're certainly one of the most popular fighters uh, from that region. Uh, we enjoy the Perth cards in general, man, and we love to see the Perth boys on there. And of course, it's being decked out uh, with the scrappy MMA guys, so we know it's certainly going to be a good time uh, for fans wanting to get to that one. Of course, get your tickets at eternalmma.com. We know they sell out fast. We know the crowds have been a big sell out there at the HBF Stadium in Perth, Western Australia. If you're not going to that one, of course, tune in live, uh, live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, what an absolute cracking card this is. Rod Costa versus Kuya Ito in the main event. And as Rod touched on himself, kindly reminding me, Anthony Drillich defending his uh, flyweight title against Max Liali. Uh, what a double header that's going to be, uh, followed by or preceded by all the fights in that main card. Uh, tune in for that one any way you can. Rod, always a pleasure having you here, man. Uh, we've done this so many times. Uh, we'll do it many more times again, I'm sure, in the future. Enjoy the rest of the lead up, man. Hopefully the cut goes well for you. And, uh, We'll talk to you on the other side, man. Uh, putting that belt back around your waist. Uh, we'll talk about the big time win that I'm sure you're going to have. For sure. Thanks, Luke. Always good to have a, have a chat with you, man. I appreciate it.